Welcome to Moon Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about symbiotic relationships. Symbiotic relationship is a close, long-term relationship between two different species. I'd like to talk about three types, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. With mutualism, both organisms benefit from the relationship, so it's a thumbs up for both. With commensalism, one organism benefits, and the other organism is neither helped nor harmed, kind of like neutral. In parasitic relationships, one organism benefits while the other organism is harmed. Some organisms live in very close symbiotic relationships with each other, which means one or both rely on the other for their survival. One type of symbiosis is called commensalism, in which one organism benefits and the other isn't harmed or helped. This owl limpet is being used by the tiny buckshot barnacles as a substrate on which to grow. As the owl limpet moves over the rock, the barnacles are carried through the water column, giving them greater access to food. Barnacles get their food by filtering it out of the water. They remain fixed in location and so are depending on the abundance of planktonic organisms living in the water around them. Another example of commensalism is shown in this picture here. This small amphipod is living attached to the outside of a sponge. Sponges filter huge quantities of water through their pores every day. This amphipod sits outside one of those holes and feeds itself off the organisms in the currents. Mutualism is a form of symbiosis in which both organisms benefit. An example is shown here with anemone and clownfish. Stinging cells in the anemones can scare off the predators of the clownfish. The clownfish has developed an immunity to the toxins in the stinging cells and they hide in the anemone. But they also can aggressively attack and scare off the anemone's main predators, sea stars and sea snails. So both benefit. Another example of mutualism happens inside this sunburst anemone on the Pacific coast. Its green color comes from tiny photosynthesizing algae that live within it and get their nutrients from the waste of the anemone. The anemone, in turn, feeds off the garden of algae as needed to supplement its own food source. ...found in clearings and forest gaps in tropical rainforests. In these regions of high competition amongst plants and animal species for survival, much of this tree's success has been attributed to a special mutualism. Cecropia trees provide a safe, climate-controlled shelter for housing a fierce ant genus known as Azteca. In addition, these trees supply nutrients to their ant colonies through tiny growths called Mullerian food bodies, which are harvested by the ants. These serve no reproductive purpose for the plant but are produced exclusively for the nourishment of the Azteca colonies. In return for food and shelter, the ants act as the plant's nervous and defense systems. Invasive, destructive elements such as herbivores and leafcutter ants are quickly swarmed and mobilized and removed from the tree. The ants even help the Cecropia tree ward off competitive and There are three types of organisms I'd like to look at that have parasitic relationships. The first is protozoa, the second are arthropods, and the third is helminths. Protozoa are single cell organisms that are found in moist areas. Many of them are parasites, like the plasmodium that causes malaria, a worldwide disease. They live in moist areas, they infect the water, other animals and humans drink the water, and then they become infected. An amoeba is a single cell protozoa and they are sometimes in the news because some of them can be brain eating and result in death but most just give you an upset stomach but they are also parasites. The next type of parasite are helmets or worms. There are several types of these. You have a round worm, a fluke, or even a tapeworm. The reason why these can be a problem is that many of these worms, such as a roundworm or a tapeworm, will live inside the intestine of an animal, 
the animal uses the restroom. This feces goes into the water. Another animal drinks the water, like us, and then this parasite starts living inside of their stomach. Next, you have arthropods that are parasites like this tick that can cause Lyme disease or a flea that can cause all kinds of problems with their host and then the mosquito who is responsible for many diseases worldwide. In each of these arthropods like the mosquito, the arthropod benefits, maybe gets food from the host and the host suffers. The mosquito is responsible for the Zika virus and even West Nile virus along with many others. In each of these types of parasites, the parasite benefits and the host is harmed. Thanks for watching about symbiotic relationships and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.